Hello everyone, welcome to History and Culture. The Tang Dynasty, following the Han Dynasty, was another powerful historical dynasty. In the year 618 AD, Li Yuan compelled Yang Jian to abdicate in his favor, and after ascending to the throne, Li Yuan declared himself emperor, marking the formal establishment of the Tang Dynasty. The Tang Dynasty went through a long period of development and transformation, and in 907 AD, Zhu Wen forced Emperor Ai of Tang to abdicate, establishing the later Liang Dynasty, signaling the official demise of the Tang Dynasty. The history of the Tang Dynasty spans 289 years, with a total of 22 emperors. Among the unified dynasties in China, the Tang Dynasty has the longest actual existence. Although the Han Dynasty lasted longer, some do not consider the Eastern Han as a direct continuation of the Western Han. The Southern Song Dynasty, on the other hand, existed in a relatively isolated corner and was not a unified dynasty. The rise and fall of the Tang Dynasty constitute a thought-provoking period in Chinese history. Throughout these long years, it not only left behind a splendid cultural legacy but also documented the rise and fall of successive monarchs. The ascent and conclusion of the Tang Dynasty present profound scenes in the river of history, offering rich insights for future generations. The founding emperor of the Tang Dynasty was Emperor Gaozu, Li Yuan. He was born into a noble family in Guangzhou, and his mother was the sister of Empress Dugu Jialua, who was the empress of Emperor Yang Jian of the Sui Dynasty. Li Yuan was favored from a young age by Emperor Yang Jian and Empress Dugu Jialua. After the death of Emperor Yang Jian, his successor, Emperor Yang Guang of Sui, misused the people's labor, ruled tyrannically, and faced failures in three campaigns against Goguryeo, leading to widespread chaos and uprisings. Amidst this chaotic situation, Li Yuan seized the opportunity to rebel in Jinyang, capturing Chang'an and installing Yang Yu, the grandson of Emperor Yang Guang, as the emperor. Li Yuan himself assumed the title of Grand Chancellor and Prince of Tang. In the year 618 AD, upon learning about the death of Emperor Yang Guang during the Jiangdu incident, Li Yuan compelled Yang Yu to abdicate, successfully usurp the Sui throne, and establish the Tang dynasty, becoming Emperor Gaozu of Tang. During his reign, Emperor Gaozu assigned military command to his son, Li Shimin, who defeated Li Gui in Longxi, eliminated Xue Zhu and his son in western Qin, repelled Lu Wuzhou and Song Jingang, captured Xia King Dou Jianda, and forced Luoyang King Shichong to surrender. Emperor Gaozu essentially accomplished the national unification. He implemented lenient and simplified legal codes, continued the civil service examination system, strengthened the military, initiated frugality and currency reforms, and restrained the growth of Buddhism, laying the foundation for the later prosperity of the Tang dynasty. However, in his later years, Emperor Gaozu exhibited indecisiveness, failing to effectively handle the issue of imperial succession, especially the relationship between his crown prince, Li Jiancheng, and his second son, Prince of Qin Li Shimin. This led to a power struggle between the two sons, ultimately resulting in the Xuanwu Gate incident. In this turmoil, the crown prince and his supporters were killed by Li Shimin. Subsequently, Li Yuan was forced to abdicate and passed away in Chang'an in the year 635 AD, at the age of 70, after nine years as the retired emperor and eight years of rule. The second emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Taizong, Li Shimin, the second son of Emperor Gaozu, Li Yuan. He displayed remarkable military achievements during the establishment of the Tang dynasty. During his reign, Emperor Taizong implemented wide-ranging reforms, advocated for thrift, and achieved significant accomplishments. Emperor Taizong successfully vanquished the eastern Turkic Khaganate and the Zuyanchuo, conquered Gaochang and Tuyuhan, and dealt a heavy blow to the Gokturks. These military actions greatly expanded the territorial and strategic influence of the Tang dynasty, 
consolidating its borders and laying the foundation for the ideal situation of great governance, known as the Zhengguan era. Emperor Taizong's rule set a solid foundation for the flourishing era of the Tang dynasty for over a century. However, despite being considered a wise ruler, Emperor Taizong also made some controversial decisions. He modified official records and, in his later years, was less inclined to accept advice. There were even instances where he expressed a desire to consume elixirs for immortality. Emperor Taizong became the first emperor of the Tang dynasty to die as a result of consuming elixirs. Nevertheless, this occurrence marked only the beginning, as many later emperors followed in his footsteps. In the year 649 AD, Emperor Taizong passed away at the age of 52 in the Hanfeng Hall of Chang'an, having ruled for 23 years. The most controversial event in Emperor Taizong's reign was the Xuanwu Gate incident, leaving a stain on his legacy. The third emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Taizong, Li Zhi. He was the ninth son of Emperor Taizong. Like his grandfather Li Yuan, Li Zhi was an emperor who was significantly underestimated. After ascending to the throne, he continued to implement the various systems established by his father, Emperor Taizong. Under the political guidance of ministers Chang Sunwuji and Chu Suiliang, he ensured social stability and economic prosperity, marking the period known as the Yonghui era. Simultaneously, Emperor Taizong achieved notable military successes. He conquered western Turkic Khaganate, Beekch, and Goguryeo, expanding the territorial boundaries of the Tang dynasty to their historical zenith. However, during his reign, Emperor Taizong made a highly controversial decision to allow the imperial harem to interfere in politics. Especially in his later years, suffering from frequent dizziness and vertigo, he compromised the governance of the state, leading to Empress Wu Zetian nearly seizing all political power. This event almost brought about the downfall of the Tang dynasty's political authority. Wu Zetian, originally a consort of Emperor Taizong, had become a Buddhist nun after his death. She was later summoned back to the palace by Emperor Taizong's son, Emperor Gaozong, and subsequently elevated to the position of Empress. Over time, political power gradually shifted into Wu Zetian's hands. In the year 683 AD, at the age of 56, Emperor Gaozong Li Zhi passed away at Zhengguan Hall in Luoyang after a 34-year reign. The fourth emperor of the Tang dynasty was Empress Wu Zetian. In the long history of China spanning 5,000 years, Wu Zetian stands out as an extraordinary woman, equal to her male counterparts. Initially an ordinary palace woman, she refused to succumb to fate. Leveraging her unparalleled beauty and exceptional strategic acumen, she successfully navigated the complexities of the ancient imperial harem and court, breaking through the patriarchal norms to become a generation-defining empress, establishing a glorious era that reached far and wide across the continents. In reality, Wu Zetian was the sixth emperor of the Tang dynasty. The reason she is referred to as the fourth emperor is because she held political power since the later period of Emperor Tang Gaozong, with the two intervening emperors merely serving as her puppets. Born in the year 624 AD, Wu Zetian was selected into the Luoyang Palace as a concubine at the age of 14. In 649 AD, after the death of Emperor Tang Taizong, following the rules of the Tang dynasty, Wu Zetian, having no children, became a nun like the other imperial consorts. However, her fate took a dramatic turn when Emperor Tang Gaozong, in May of 650 AD, visited the Gaoyue Temple with the Empress and ministers, completely altering Wu Zetian's destiny. Empress Wang noticed Emperor Tang Gaozong's special affection for Wu Zetian and secretly brought her into the palace. Subsequently, without leaving any traces, she was sent to Emperor Tang Gaozong's sleeping quarters. Little did anyone anticipate that this move was akin to inviting a wolf into one's home. Soon after returning to the palace, Wu Zetian gained a legitimate title, and at this point, 
she had Emperor Tang Gaozong wrapped around her finger. Wu Zetian seized control of the emperor's lifeline, gradually assuming political power, particularly as Emperor Tang Gaozong's health deteriorated in his later years. Due to the strong influence Wu Zetian held over the emperor, and her adept political insight, which aligned with the societal development of the time, the emperor, with the consent of his ministers, accepted many of Wu Zetian's political suggestions. Wu Zetian eliminated obstacles in her path, and with ministers in agreement, she effectively became unstoppable. Shortly thereafter, Emperor Tang Gaozong issued an edict formally declaring Wu Zetian as empress. At that time, less than a year had passed since Wu Zetian's second entry into the palace. At the age of 67, Wu Zetian ascended to the throne and declared herself emperor in 690 AD, changing the dynasty's name to Zhou. She became the only legitimate empress in Chinese history, a female ruler with extraordinary political acumen, known for appointing strict officials to consolidate her power. However, in her later years, Wu Zetian became engrossed in pleasure, favored male favorites, and allowed them to intervene in political affairs, causing tension between monarch and ministers and throwing the state into turmoil. In February of 705 AD, Chancellor Zhang Jianji and others attempted to enthrone Li Xian, accusing Wu Zetian's male favorites of treason. They led the imperial guards, killed Wu Zetian's male favorites Zhang Yiji and Zhang Changzong, and besieged the Jixian Hall, forcing Wu Zetian to abdicate. This event is known as the Xuanwu Gate Incident. The following day, Wu Zetian appointed Crown Prince Li Xian as the regent, and on the third day, she officially abdicated. After reigning for 15 years, she passed away shortly after abdicating at the age of 82. Wu Zetian's life is full of legends and controversies. Despite the dirtiness of her ascent to power and some lapses in judgment in her later years, during her rule, she reformed the imperial examination system, suppressed the aristocracy, promoted economic development in the Tang dynasty, and rectified corruption within the court. Her emphasis on agricultural development laid the foundation for the prosperity of the Tang dynasty in the subsequent era known as the Kaiyuan reign. The fifth emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Tang Zhongzong Li Xian. Li Xian was the seventh son of Emperor Tang Gaozong and the third son of Empress Wu Zetian. After the death of Emperor Tang Gaozong, Emperor Tang Zhongzong Li Xian ascended to the throne but proved to be weak and incompetent, yielding all political matters to his mother, Empress Wu Zetian. He reigned for only 55 days before being deposed as Prince of Luling due to disagreements with Empress Wu Zetian. Li Xian remained under house arrest for 14 years until Empress Wu Zetian assumed the throne, reinstating him as crown prince. In the year 705 AD, Empress Wu Zetian, aged 82, was forced to abdicate due to the Xuanwu Gate incident, and Emperor Tang Zhongzong Li Xian officially returned to power. Upon his restoration, Emperor Tang Zhongzong allowed Empress Wei to participate in state affairs. The Empress aspired to emulate Wu Zetian's rule and conspired with Prime Minister Wu Sanxi to consolidate power. Eventually, Emperor Tang Zhongzong Li Xian fell victim to Empress Wei's machinations, and he was poisoned. In 710 AD, Emperor Tang Zhongzong passed away at the age of 55. His reign, split into two periods, lasted a total of five years. During his first reign, Li Xian served as a mere puppet with no real authority. In his second reign, he reinstated original Tang dynasty policies, abolished taxes, and defeated the Turkic Khaganate once again, exhibiting qualities of a wise ruler. However, he also allowed Empress Wei and princesses to engage in politics, demonstrating signs of a weak ruler. The sixth emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Rui Zong, Li Dan. He was the eighth son of Emperor Gaozong Li Zhi and the fourth son of Empress Wu Zetian. Similar to his brother Li Xian, he initially served as a puppet emperor, not the legitimate heir to the throne. However, he seized power through a coup led by his son. 
In the year 684 AD, Empress Wu Zetian dethroned Emperor Zhongzong Li Xian, reducing him to the Prince of Luling, and then appointed Li Dan as the puppet emperor. In 690 AD, Empress Wu forced Li Dan to abdicate in her favor, usurping the throne and establishing the Wu Zhou regime. Li Dan was demoted to the prince heir, changing his surname to Wu. Later, due to his involvement in the Xinong Rebellion, Li Dan was conferred the title of king. Following the death of Empress Wei, who poisoned Emperor Zhongzong, she took control of the political power and orchestrated a massive purge of the imperial family. Aspiring to emulate Empress Wu's reign, she supported Li Chongmao as emperor, plotting against Li Dan. Subsequently, Li Dan's son, Li Longji, with the assistance of his aunt Princess Taiping, initiated the Tang Long Rebellion, executed Empress Wei and her supporters, and restored Li Dan to the throne. Emperors Rui Zong Li Dan and Zhongzong Li Xian, the two brothers, experienced similar fates of being deposed and regaining the throne. Although both enacted some policies befitting a wise ruler, they never fully controlled the court. During Emperor Zhongzong's reign, Li Xian's wife and daughter intervened in political affairs. In Emperor Ruizong's era, his sister Princess Taiping also interfered in politics, and the conflicts between Li Dan and his son Li Longji escalated. After Li Dan's restoration, Li Longji engaged in a power struggle with Princess Taiping. In 712 AD, Emperor Ruizong Li Dan decided to abdicate in favor of his son Emperor Xuanzong Li Longji, assuming the title of Grand Emperor to support his son. Upon Emperor Xuanzong's ascension, he launched the Xientian Rebellion, leading to the death of Princess Taiping and the resolution of internal strife. In 716 AD, Emperor Ruizong Li Dan passed away in Chang'an at the age of 55. He had two reigns, totaling eight years. Similar to Emperor Zhongzong, Emperor Ruizong cannot be definitively categorized as a wise or misguided ruler, and their legacies were marked by modest achievements and tumultuous destinies. The seventh emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Shao, Li Chongmao. He was the fourth son of Emperor Zhongzong Li Xian. After Empress Wei poisoned Emperor Zhongzong, Li Chongmao ascended the throne at the young age of 16. However, his reign lasted for less than a month. Facing the Tang Long political upheaval orchestrated by his cousin Li Longji and Aunt Princess Taiping, Li Chongmao was compelled to abdicate in favor of Li Dan. In the year 714 AD, Li Chongmao passed away under unclear circumstances at the age of 20. The eighth emperor of the Tang dynasty was Tang Xuanzong, Li Longji. Li Longji was the third son of Emperor Ruizong, Li Dan. After suppressing the Lushan Rebellion and executing Queen Wei in the Tang Long political changes, Li Longji, also known as Tang Xuanzong, was proclaimed crown prince by his father, Emperor Ruizong. Later, following Emperor Ruizong's abdication, Li Longji ascended to the throne. However, Political power was still primarily controlled by Princess Taiping during the initial period of Li Longji's reign. His main task upon ascending the throne was to wrest power from Princess Taiping. In 713 AD, Tang Xuanzong successfully seized control, resulting in the execution of Princess Taiping and the consolidation of supreme authority in the empire. During his rule, Tang Dynasty reached its zenith in national strength surpassing any previous dynasty. However, in the later years of his reign, Tang Xuanzong's governance became characterized by extravagance and indulgence, leading to a decline in administrative efficiency. He favored corrupt officials like Li Linfu and Yang Guizhong, indulged in a relationship with Yang Yuhuan, and relied heavily on foreign forces, including in Lushan, to stabilize the borders. These actions eventually sparked the devastating and Lushan Rebellion, marking a turning point in Tang Dynasty's fortunes. As the rebellion unfolded, Chang'an fell, and Tang Xuanzong fled in disarray. At the Ma Wei relay station, a mutiny occurred among his retinue, resulting in the death of Yang Guizhong and the forced suicide of Yang Yuhuan. 
Tang Xuanzong ultimately escaped to Chengdu. In 756 AD, Tang Xuanzong's son, Li Heng, was acclaimed as emperor in Linguo, becoming Tang Suzong. Tang Xuanzong, compelled to become the Taishang Huang, retired emperor, became the third retired emperor of the Tang dynasty. After Tang Suzong's forces recaptured Chang'an, Tang Xuanzong returned from Chengdu. However, he died in Chang'an in 762 AD at the age of 78, after six years as the retired emperor. Throughout his reign, Tang Xuanzong experienced the flourishing era of Kaiyuan and the turmoil of the Anlushan Rebellion. Although he achieved some enlightened governance, the severe impact of the rebellion nearly destroyed the Tang dynasty. Therefore, the assessment of Tang Xuanzong as part enlightened ruler and part ineffective ruler might be a relatively fair characterization. Additionally, during his reign, eunuchs began to accumulate considerable power, setting the stage for the subsequent rise of eunuch influence. The ninth emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Suzong, Li Heng. He was the third son of Emperor Xuanzong. After the rebellion at Mount Mawe, Li Heng separated from Emperor Xuanzong and declared himself emperor in Linwu. When Li Heng ascended the throne, the devastating and Lushan rebellion was ongoing, making the suppression of the rebellion his primary task. During this effort, Li Heng achieved significant military successes, successfully recapturing the capital and reuniting with his father Emperor Xuanzong. These were his greatest accomplishments during his reign. However, a notable flaw during Li Heng's reign as emperor was his favoritism towards Empress Zhang, allowing her undue influence in state affairs. Additionally, he appointed the eunuch Li Fugua as minister of war, further strengthening the control of eunuchs over military and political affairs, leading to an increasingly influential role for eunuchs. After the death of Tang Suzong Li Heng, Empress Zhang even attempted to depose the crown prince, but fortunately, this plan was not successful. Otherwise, it might have led to significant turmoil in the Tang dynasty once again. In 762 AD, upon learning of his father Emperor Xuanzong's death, Li Heng passed away in the same year at the age of 52. He ruled for a total of six years. At the time of his death, although the Anlushan Rebellion had not yet concluded, it was approaching its end. During the reign of Tang Suzong Li Heng, while he may not have equaled the personal capabilities of his father Emperor Xuanzong, it is fair to say that he was a ruler with considerable wisdom. The tenth emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Daizong, Li Yu. Li Yu was the eldest son of Emperor Suzong. When Emperor Suzong fell seriously ill, his wife, Empress Zhang, sought to depose Crown Prince Li Yu and replace him with Prince Yu, Li Ji. However, the eunuch Li Fugua protected Li Yu and arrested Empress Zhang. Shortly after Emperor Suzong's death, Li Yu was enthroned with the support of Li Fugua. Shortly after ascending the throne, Emperor Daizong devised a plan to eliminate the powerful eunuch Li Fugua, and appointed his son, Li Kuo, to command the Tang army, successfully quelling the Anlushan rebellion that had lasted for eight years. With the country now in a period of peace and development, Emperor Daizong later executed several powerful court officials and eunuchs. He focused on selecting capable individuals, reformed transportation and adjusted grain prices, implementing a financial policy prioritizing the well-being of the people. These were all contributions made by Emperor Daizong. However, the devastating impact of the Anlushan Rebellion severely weakened the vitality of the Tang dynasty. Centralized power diminished significantly, while the influence of regional military governors, famously known as Jidushi, gradually grew. This marked the beginning of the phenomena of regional autonomy and eunuch dominance, becoming crucial factors contributing to the instability of the later Tang dynasty. Unfortunately, Emperor Daizong was unable to address these issues effectively. In the year 779, Emperor Daizong Li Yu passed away in Chang'an at the age of 54, having reigned for 17 years.
The eleventh emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Dizong, Li Shi. Li Shi was the eldest son of Emperor Dizong. In the early years of Emperor Dizong's reign, there was a strict prohibition against eunuch interference in politics. He emphasized the selection of talented individuals, abolished the system of rent and corvée, and implemented the two-tax system. These policies contributed to the economic and social development of the Tang dynasty, creating a period of prosperity. However, Emperor Dizong's wise rule did not last long. Soon, he began to impose heavy miscellaneous taxes, leading to a decline in the economy of the Tang dynasty. The imposition of these taxes was closely related to the political situation at the time. Faced with the issue of separatist powers among regional military governors, Emperor Dizong sought to address the problem by requiring substantial financial resources. However, his approach did not yield the expected results. In an attempt to suppress regional powers, he implemented the policy of reducing their authority, leading to widespread uprisings among the regional military governors. This conflict became known as the Rebellion of the Four Kings in Two Regions. Subsequently, Emperor Dizong had to flee from Chang'an, just like his predecessor Emperor Xianzong. Although he eventually quelled the rebellion with the help of Prime Minister Li Bai and General Li Sheng, his attitude toward regional military governors changed. He became more cautious and refrained from taking hasty actions against them. However, the situation of regional military governors maintaining autonomous rule became increasingly serious. Following these events, Emperor Dizong resorted to desperate measures, appointing trusted eunuchs to command the imperial army in showing leniency toward the regional military governors. Ultimately, Emperor Dizong passed away in Chang'an in the year 805 at the age of 64, after a reign of 27 years. The twelfth emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Xuanzong, Li Song. He was the eldest son of Emperor Dizong. In fact, Emperor Xuanzong had relatively strong personal abilities, being resourceful and decisive, qualities that would make him a wise ruler. Upon ascending to the throne, he realized the chaotic state of affairs left by his father, with eunuchs and regional military governors wielding significant power. Determined to reform and retrieve power from the eunuchs and regional warlords, he initiated the Yongzhen reforms. However, this reform effort challenged the interests of the eunuchs and regional warlords, leading to the failure of Emperor Xuanzong's plan to consolidate power. In the year 805, after a reign of only 186 days, Emperor Xuanzong was forced to abdicate in favor of his son, Li Chun, becoming the fourth retired emperor of the Tang dynasty. Following his abdication, he held the title of retired emperor for just five months before his hasty death at the age of 45. Despite being compelled to abdicate, historical evaluations of Emperor Xuanzong are relatively positive. He demonstrated resilience and composure in the face of adversity, whether serving as crown prince, emperor, or retired emperor. The thirteenth emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Xianzong Li Chun, the eldest son of Emperor Xuanzong. During the mid-Tang period, he stood out as one of the few emperors displaying the abilities of a wise ruler. Although he ascended the throne with the support of eunuchs and regional military governors, theoretically making him a puppet, he implemented many measures beneficial to the country. Xianzong carried out reforms in the imperial examination system, reduced the number of officials, and strengthened financial management. Additionally, he addressed the perennial issue of regional military governors left unresolved by Emperor Dizong. Through legislation, he restrained the power of these governors, bringing regions like Hunan, Shandong, and Hebei back under central control. This brief achievement of reunification during his reign is known as the Yuan He Zhongxing period. If Emperor Xianzong had been able to maintain his wise rule, the problem of regional military governors might have been eradicated. However, in the later years of his reign, he made many mistakes that other Tang emperors might have made, 
such as excessive reliance on elixirs. He became the second Tang emperor to die from the excessive consumption of elixirs. In his later years, Emperor Xianzong, in pursuit of immortality, became superstitious, regularly taking alchemical substances that led to his irritable temperament, frequent physical abuse of palace maids, and purges of eunuchs. Eventually, the entire court became fraught with insecurity. In the year 820, to protect themselves, eunuchs led by Chen Hongzhi assassinated Emperor Xianzong. He ruled for 15 years and died at the age of 43. The 14th emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Muzong, Li Heng, the third son of Emperor Xianzong. After the assassination of Emperor Xianzong by the eunuch Chen Hongzhi and Wang Shoucheng, Li Heng was enthroned. When Li Heng ascended to the throne, the overall situation of the Tang dynasty was relatively stable due to the efforts of Emperor Xianzong. If Emperor Muzong continued his father's policy of diligent governance, the strength of the Tang dynasty might have reached new heights. However, he failed to inherit his father's wisdom and instead repeated the mistakes of incompetent rulers. Emperor Muzong indulged in a life of pleasure, reveling in extravagance and pursuing personal enjoyment. He initiated extensive construction projects and heavily relied on eunuchs, leading to a period of political obscurity. Moreover, his mishandling of military reductions resulted in a renewed rebellion of the three garrisons in Hebei, posing a severe threat to the Tang dynasty. Simultaneously, like his father, he became infatuated with the pursuit of longevity through elixirs. In the end, Emperor Muzong Li Heng died of poisoning from elixirs in 824 AD, just four years into his reign, at the young age of 30. Emperor Muzong can be considered a thorough incompetent ruler, the first true meaning of an inept monarch in the history of the Tang dynasty. However, this marked only the beginning of the collapse of the entire Tang dynasty regime. The 15th emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Jingzong, Li Zhan. Li Zhan was the eldest son of Emperor Muzong. After Emperor Muzong succumbed to the effects of longevity elixirs, Li Zhan ascended the throne at the young age of 16. Similar to his father, Emperor Jingzong made minimal contributions. He showed little interest in state affairs, indulging in entertainment and neglecting the governance of the country. This allowed eunuch Wang Shoucheng to manipulate and corrupt the political order. In the year 827 AD, while playing ball and drinking, Emperor Jingzong was assassinated by the false eunuch Liu Keming. At the age of 18, after a brief two-year reign, he met his untimely end. Fortunately, the father-son duo of Emperor Muzong and Emperor Jingzong had a relatively short combined reign of around six years, mitigating their adverse impact on the Tang dynasty. If their rule had persisted longer, the fate of the Tang dynasty might have taken a more perilous turn, potentially leading to its downfall. The 16th emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Wenzong, Liang was the second son of Emperor Muzong and the younger brother of Emperor Jingzong. After the eunuch Liu Keming assassinated Emperor Jingzong, he planned to enthrone Li Wu, the son of Emperor Xianzong. However, another eunuch, Wang Shoucheng, sent troops into the palace, killed Liu Keming and Li Wu, and then enthroned Liang as Emperor Wenzong. When Emperor Wenzong ascended to the throne at the age of 18, he was in his prime. However, the overall situation of the Tang dynasty was already complicated due to the growing power of eunuchs since the reign of Emperor Dizong. The political power and the life and death of the emperor were largely controlled by the eunuchs. In an attempt to eradicate the eunuch influence and reclaim the lost imperial authority, Emperor Wenzong promoted ministers such as Li Sun and Zheng Zhu as his close aides to plan the extermination of the eunuchs. Unfortunately, the plan was leaked, leading to a massacre of ministers by the eunuchs, and Emperor Wenzong himself was subjected to house arrest. This incident is known as the Ganlu Incident. Subsequently, Emperor Wenzong, Liang, became depressed and turned to excessive drinking. 
Soon after, he succumbed to illness and passed away at the age of 32, having ruled for 14 years. Although Emperor Wenzong's reign was relatively short, his early actions suggested that he had the qualities of a wise ruler. He abstained from indulging in pleasures, diligently attended to state affairs, and practiced frugality. However, his limited capabilities became evident during the power struggle with the eunuchs, resulting in his ultimate failure. The 17th emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Wuzong, Li Yen. Li Yen was the fifth son of Emperor Wenzong and the younger brother of Emperor Wuzong. After the death of Emperor Wenzong, Li Yen was enthroned with the support of the eunuch Chiu Shirlian, deviating from the normal succession order, which would have been the son of Emperor Jingzong or the grandson of Emperor Wenzong. Upon ascending the throne, Emperor Wuzong, at the age of 18, demonstrated considerable talent. He appointed the capable Li Diyu as his prime minister, and together they took measures to suppress the power of eunuch Chiu Shirliang and weaken the influence of the regional military governors. Simultaneously, Emperor Wuzong focused on economic development, initiating reforms, and consolidating the central government's control over regions such as Hunan, Shandong, and Hebei that had fallen under the sway of the regional military governors. This period of recovery in the Tang dynasty's fortunes is known as the Huichang Zhongxing or the Huixiechang Renaissance. Objectively speaking, the Tang dynasty easily produced wise rulers, given their many wise ancestors to learn from. However, these rulers also inherited some of the shortcomings of their forebears. Emperor Wuzong was no exception. Despite his initial wise governance, his later years saw an infatuation with seeking immortality through Daoist practices and elixirs, following the footsteps of Tang Taizong and Tang Wenzong. In the year 846, after just six years on the throne, Emperor Wuzong passed away at the age of 33 due to the consumption of elixirs. He became the third Tang emperor to die from such practices. The fascination of Tang emperors with Taoism and elixirs was likely linked to their shared family name, Li, and the belief that the founder of Taoism, Laozi, was their ancestor. The 18th emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Xuanzong, Li Chen. Emperor Xuanzong's background is quite unique, he was the 13th son of Emperor Xianzong and the younger brother of Emperor Muzong. The previously mentioned emperors, including Emperor Jingzong, Emperor Wenzong, and Emperor Wuzong, were his nephews. According to normal circumstances, the throne should not have passed to him. However, when Emperor Wuzong fell seriously ill, with the support of the eunuch Chiu Shirliang, Li Chen became the crown prince and assumed the role of regent. The eunuch Ma Yuanji believed Li Chen to be an inept figure, easily controllable, and therefore, after Emperor Wuzong's death, Li Chen ascended the throne smoothly and became Emperor Xuanzong. In his youth, Li Chen was valued by Emperor Xianzong. However, to protect himself, he pretended to be foolish and mentally impaired, allowing him to escape the troubles that befell his nephews, including Emperor Muzong, Emperor Jingzong, Emperor Wenzong, and Emperor Wuzong. Surprisingly, the eunuchs did not anticipate that Li Chen was only pretending to be foolish. Upon ascending the throne, he immediately displayed extraordinary abilities. During Emperor Xuanzong's reign, he pursued diligent governance, appointed capable officials, and weakened the power of the eunuchs. He put an end to internal strife, significantly strengthening imperial authority. Li Chen reformed the bureaucratic system, advocated for thriftiness, and demonstrated concern for the well-being of the people, leading to a period of prosperity known as the De Zhong Zhi Zhi. However, in his later years, Emperor Xuanzong succumbed to the same flaw as some of his predecessors, a fondness for consuming elixirs. This eventually led to poisoning and his demise. In this manner, Emperor Xuanzong became the fourth Tang emperor to die from ingesting elixirs, passing away at the age of 50 after a reign of 13 years.
The 19th emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Izong, Li Zua. He was the eldest son of Emperor Xuanzong. After Emperor Xuanzong's death due to taking elixirs, the eunuch Wang Zongshi supported Li Zua and proclaimed him as Emperor Izong. This highlights the significant influence of eunuchs in the Tang dynasty, a power that proved difficult to eliminate regardless of attempts at restriction. Emperor Izong possessed strong personal capabilities. He excelled in governing the country and displayed high personal cultivation. During his reign, he not only focused on diligent governance but also had knowledge of music, presenting himself as a versatile individual. However, in the later years of his rule, Emperor Izong embraced Buddhism, neglected state affairs, and indulged in luxury. This led to internal political corruption and external hardships for the people, resulting in widespread uprisings and the gradual loss of the achievements made during Emperor Xuanzong's reign. In the year 873 AD, Emperor Izong passed away in Chang'an at the age of 41, after a 14-year reign. At his death, the Tang dynasty was already in a precarious state, on the verge of collapse. The 20th emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Shizong Li Xian. Li Xian was the fifth son of Emperor Izong and had been cared for by the eunuch Tian Lingzi since childhood, leading to a strong reliance on Tian Lingzi. After the death of Emperor Izong, the twelve-year-old Emperor Shizong Li Xian ascended to the throne under the support of Tian Lingzi. However, after his accession, he indulged in leisure activities and developed a particular fondness for playing polo. Meanwhile, the actual political power was controlled by the eunuch Tian Lingzi, who engaged in rampant extortion. This situation led to the uprisings of Wang Xianji and Huang Chao, which dealt a devastating blow to the Tang dynasty. The once prosperous era of the Great Tang, having lost its capital Chang'an, faced further challenges as powerful regional military governors rose to prominence. Although the uprisings of Wang Xianji and Huang Chao were eventually quelled under pressure from various military governors, this period of unrest resulted in the fragmentation of the Tang dynasty. In the year 888 AD, Emperor Shizong Li Xian passed away at the age of 27 after a 15-year reign. He is remembered as one of the few ineffective emperors of the Tang dynasty who failed to achieve significant accomplishments. The 21st emperor of the Tang dynasty was Emperor Zhaozong, Li Yi. Li Yi was the seventh son of Emperor Izong and the younger brother of Emperor Shizong. When Emperor Shizong passed away without leaving a male heir, he abdicated in favor of his younger brother Li Yi on his deathbed. Like some previous emperors, Emperor Zhaozong ascended to the throne with the support of eunuchs. Upon ascending to the throne, Emperor Zhaozong faced a chaotic political situation. However, he harbored hopes of revitalizing the Great Tang Dynasty. He implemented policies of selecting talents and promoting capable individuals, striving for effective governance. Emperor Zhaozong waged wars against Tian Lingzi in Sichuan and Li Qiong in Hadong, successfully eliminating eunuch Tian Lingzi and weakening the influence of Li Qiong, further consolidating the central authority of the Tang dynasty. However, due to prolonged military expeditions, the central military forces of the Tang dynasty suffered significant losses. The central army was greatly diminished, allowing Zhu Wen to rise steadily and become the dominant force in the central plains, laying the groundwork for the downfall of the Tang dynasty. Zhu Wen eventually captured Chang'an, massacred all the eunuchs, and completely resolved the issue of the Tang court's officials. However, thereafter, Zhu Wen consolidated power, and Emperor Zhaozong became a puppet. In the year 904 AD, Zhu Wen seized Emperor Zhaozong, relocated the capital to Luoyang, and sent someone to assassinate him. Emperor Zhaozong died at the age of 38, having ruled for 16 years. It can be said that Emperor Zhaozong was also a wise ruler, but he lived in an unfortunate era, mainly due to the escalating problems of eunuchs and regional military governors in the mid-to-late Tang dynasty, making them difficult to eradicate.
The 22nd Emperor of the Tang Dynasty was Emperor Ai of Tang, Li Zhu. He was the ninth son of Emperor Zhaozong. After Zhu Wen killed Emperor Zhaozong, he immediately installed the 13-year-old Emperor Ai, Li Zhu, as a puppet emperor. During Li Zhu's reign, Zhu Wen ruthlessly killed many ministers loyal to the imperial family. Ultimately, in the year 907 AD, Zhu Wen forced Li Zhu to abdicate in his favor and proclaimed himself emperor, changing the dynasty's name to Liang. This event marked the official end of the Tang dynasty. In 908 AD, after abdication, Li Zhu was assassinated by agents sent by Zhu Wen at the age of 16, having ruled for only three years. Emperor Ai of Tang, Li Zhu, not only was the last emperor of the Tang dynasty but also the only one without a temple name. With this, after 289 years, the Tang dynasty, with its lineage of 22 emperors, came to an end. Strictly speaking, excluding the historical period of Empress Wu Zetian usurping the Tang and establishing the Zhou, the Tang dynasty had 21 legitimate emperors. Looking back at history, it is evident that the Tang dynasty had many wise emperors. However, many of these wise rulers exhibited relative incompetence in their later years. The decline of the prosperous era of the Great Tang is attributed in history to the Anlushan Rebellion and the corruption of the late Tang dynasty. Nevertheless, the Anlushan Rebellion was only a catalyst for the tragic events in history, a product of an institutional environment that did not align with the survival and development of humanity. The so-called Golden Age was just a momentary prosperity of the dynasty, like a fleeting flower, ultimately unable to escape the fate of being phased out by history. As the Yuan dynasty statesman Zhang Yanghao said, prosperity brings suffering to the people, and so does downfall. Zhang Yanghao, as a prominent official in the Yuan dynasty, experienced the vicissitudes of the six dynasties and had a broad perspective. However, he still only saw the reality of people's suffering, without delving into the underlying causes. Moreover, for the majority of the populace, if most people remain ignorant and pitiable, the reality of people's suffering will never change. This may be a lesson from history, urging us to deeply contemplate the various issues in the development of human society, with the hope of creating a better future. This is History and Culture Channel. Your support through likes and subscriptions keeps us going strong. See you in our next update. Stay tuned.